Hi folks, uh, before we go ahead and learn actual data structures and algorithms, we need to understand why are we even studying this subject. It's very, very important to ask these critical questions like why are we even studying this subject? Where is all of the learnings that I'm going to gain from these subjects actually applied in the real world? So why, why am I learning it? Where are where are all the concepts that I'm learning from here going to be applied in the real world? And how are they going to be applied? Understanding these, these key aspects will give you a more appreciation of what you're learning and also more context. So you will have, you'll learn to appreciate the concept you're learning. You'll also be able to connect the dots. You will be able to connect the dots and understand why you are learning this concept and how whatever you're learning any data structure algorithm that you're learning, how is it connected to the real world, right? How is how you as a software engineer eventually, right? Most people who are studying computer science would eventually become software engineers or uh, also called as software development engineers or data scientists, machine learning engineers, whatever, right? Whatever, or, or a database admin, right? Whatever are your roles. How is everything that you're going to learn in data structures and algorithms going to be useful for you for the next 30 or 40 years of your career, right? So these are very, very important questions that we'll try to address in this video so that, be, so that when we go and learn the actual data structures and algorithms, you will have a better appreciation and, a, and you'll be able to connect it to some real world stuff that you see every day, right? So before we go into some of these, let me take you on a tangential tour and tell you how, why, I mean, I'll show you some data I'll give you some data and arguments to convince you that data structures and algorithms is probably the most important subject, right? These are the most important. These are some of the most important topics in the whole of computer science. Okay, if I have to pick three things in computer science that are most important, I will pick the knowledge of a programming language. Okay, any programming, knowledge of programming in general, the idea of programming, as the most important thing, obviously, without, because without some knowledge of programming, you can't even work with a computer, right? Then the second most important thing, I will rate it as data structures and algorithms. And let me, let me justify why I think this is important and also why the world in general, recruiters in general and institutions think that programming languages, data structures and algorithms are important. Programming language can be anything. You, get, you, you could be comfortable in C, C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, right? Anything is all right, but knowledge of programming is important. So let, let, me, let me back up this claim that these are the most important subjects in computer science for a software engineer. Let me back it up with some data, okay? Otherwise, I'm, this is just my opinion, right? So let's back it up with some data. Uh, let's take companies, right? Top-notch companies. If you interview at Google, Facebook, Amazon, right? Flipkart, right? Any of the major companies in India or in the world in computer science, most of their interviews, okay? If you're interviewing for a software engineer as a fresher, right? The, the role is often called a software development engineer one or software engineer one and things like that, right? So you're a fresher engineer. You've just graduated from your B-Tech or M-Tech and you're joining some of these companies as a fresh software engineer, right? The interviews that these companies conduct and the programming rounds that these companies conduct, over 90% of them, 90% of the interview is going to be focusing on your knowledge of programming data structures and algorithms. There will be some 10 rest, rest of the 10% on other topics like operating systems, databases, etc. But over 90% of these companies and 90% of these interviews are going to be based on programming language, data structures and algorithms only. That's how important some of these world's best companies think is the, is, is, is the knowledge of, or a good knowledge of programming data structures and algorithms to be a good software engineer, number one. And this is not just with respect to the top notch companies, across the spectrum of companies. If you're interviewing for TCS, if you're interviewing for Infosys or Cognizant, or also called a CTS, any company, even a small startup, even a small two member startup, for any of these companies across the spectrum, whether it's a product based company or a services company, most of their interviews and most of their programming challenges will revolve around your knowledge of programming data structures and algorithms. Because these companies across the spectrum know 
that if a student is good in programming data structures and algorithms, he can pick up most of the other concepts in computers and be a good software development engineer or a software engineer uh, in, in their careers, right? Even for data scientists, machine learning engineers, etc., which is my background, I worked, I worked as, a, as a senior machine learning scientist at companies like Yahoo, Amazon, my own startup and things like that. And at most of these places, even for data science and machine learning roles, if you're a computer science student, you will at least have one round of data structures and algorithms. That's how important this whole subject is from a, from a job perspective, right? Look at this. This is from a job perspective. And the data here is that across the spectrum of companies, from the smallest of startups to the giant of companies and everybody in between, everyone thinks that knowledge of programming, data structures and algorithms is critical for you to be a good software engineer. And this is, this is proof, right? That's one thing. Second thing is, if you're preparing for competitive exams like GATE, right? If you're preparing for competitive exams like GATE, and GATE is an entrance exam for master's programs. GATE is an entrance exam for master's programs in India, right? If you pick up the most important subjects in terms of marks allocated in the exam, right? For the least amount of content, for the least amount of concepts, for the least amount of concepts, most number of marks least number of concepts, most number of marks. I always write number as hash, right? What this means is you have to read this as number. Okay, just a short form here. Okay, so least number of concepts and most number of marks you will get in gate. The whole of gate in general across the years, right, will be from your because see uh, the only programming language that's in gate syllabus is C. So you have C data structures and algorithms constituting the most number of marks with the least number of concepts and the least amount of effort. So if you want to really score high in GATE or get a very good rank to get admissions to the best institutes in India for your master's program, right? You have to focus on programming data structures and algorithms because it gives you the most chance to, to obtain most number of marks with least amount of effort. Again, this is proof that even educational institutions this is proof that even higher educational institutions, even higher educational institutions believe that knowledge of some programming language like C, data structures and algorithms is super important for a good uh, software engineer or a researcher eventually, right? This is proof, right? All this is data. One from companies, one piece of data comes from companies across the board. Other piece of data comes from competitive exams conducted by India's best higher education institutions, right? So this is proof in the pudding here that yes, these subjects are the most important ones for you to be a successful software engineer or a graduate student with a, in a master's program. Okay, all this is good, but where are we going to apply all of these concepts to real world? In the industry, once you become a software engineer, how are you going to employ some of these techniques? How are you going to use the techniques that you're learning in data structures and algorithms how are they even useful? Can you give me some examples so that, so that I can connect the dots? Some real world examples that we use on day to day basis. Very valid question. No doubts about it. Right? So let's, let's, let's walk through some examples. I'll start with some of the simplest examples. All of you may have seen Google, right? Okay. Certainly one of the most visited websites on earth. So on Google, if I just type data structures, I have not yet entered anything. It gives me all of these things autofill. So this is called autocomplete or autofill. Okay, I'm on the Google homepage here. I just typed data structures and I haven't yet entered enter. Google recognizes, Google recognizes what are the most common search terms that other people who have typed data structures have typed in. And it uses a bunch of very, very interesting data structures to autocomplete. And to be able to do it very fast, for example, if I change this, right? Suppose if I change this data structures, if I say in, if the moment I say in, it starts changing the, it starts changing the recommendations that it's giving me. Okay. Or if I say with, okay, it's, it changes the recommendations that it gives me. Okay. If I, if I type and it changes the recommendations that it gives me, all of these are happening super fast. Imagine there are billions of search queries. There are billions and billions of search queries that, that take place on Google every day. 
and Google is performing this autocomplete for these billions of search queries almost instantaneously. Right? So autocomplete is an example that we often see or even spell correct. For example, if, if I go here and if I don't type, suppose if I don't type, if I type the spelling wrong, okay, if I type, Google auto corrects it for me. Google says, I probably you, what you meant was data structures, T-U-R-E-S and not T-U-E-R-S. It auto corrects. So autocomplete and autocorrect are extremely useful things that we see every day. This is something that we encounter every day. Underneath this, there is a ton of data structures and algorithms, right? So some simple examples are autocomplete on Google, which we, which we observe every day, autocomplete on Google. And by the end of this course, or by the end of this subject of data structures and algorithms, you will be able to build a simple Google autocomplete, trust me. I promise you that, right? So similarly, the whole search on Google, imagine the search engine, the whole Google search itself is a, is a bunch of extremely advanced data structures and algorithms. Remember, Google search happens billions of times and in extremely fast. Just look at the speed. Imagine the challenge in being able to provide search results for billions of people who are searching across the world at extremely fast speeds. How is this happening? This is happening because of some very, very interesting data structures and algorithms that Google uses, right? That, that, that's another very simple yet extremely powerful application of algorithms and data structures. I would actually call Google to be a data structures and algorithms company because they use some of these most advanced algorithms and data structures day in and day out to optimize their systems, right? So many of you may have seen even Amazon, for example, right? For example, if you go to Amazon, right? If you go to Amazon's page, right? You'll see a lot of search results here. Suppose if, if I just search for headphones, if I just search for headphones on Amazon, right? I get a bunch of search results, extremely fast, very relevant search results. How is this happening at that speed? There are millions of search queries, hundreds of millions of search queries that happen on Amazon. So every search engine that you come across, this could be search on Google, this could be search on uh, Facebook, right? This could be search on Amazon. All of them are powered and the billions of searches that happen and the search results are extremely fast. All these are made possible because of data structures and algorithms. I'm being very honest here. I mean, anyway, we learn some of these data structures and algorithms by the end of these, uh, the, this, this course on data structures and algorithms, right? We'll learn, by the end of this, we'll surely learn some of the very important ones. Okay, the other, other slightly more complex examples are, you all might have heard of this data called, uh, this concept called big data. Big data, in a nutshell, is basically being able to process large amounts of data. We all know what a gigabyte is, right? We know what a terabyte is. A terabyte is a thousand GB, right? A petabyte is a thousand terabytes. Today, for most of these large companies like Facebook, Amazon, uh, uh, Flipkart, Google, all of these companies are sitting on petabytes of data, tons and tons of data. Now processing all of this data is super critical. Just simply processing this data. This processing could involve, for example, in the case of Amazon, how do I ship a product from one location to another location? Because at the end of the day, the product has to reach from Amazon's warehouses, right, to your home. So Amazon has to decide for hundreds of millions of packages how it will send from here to here. And there is ton of data that companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook, everything is sitting on. And you may have heard of terms like Hadoop and Spark. Hadoop and Spark. These are big data platforms which enable companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Flipkart, etc., to process these petabytes of data. And underneath these Hadoop and Spark, underneath all of this are your simple algorithms and data structures. Trust me, a lot of how Hadoop and Spark work boils down to simple algorithms and data structures. Nothing very fancy there, right? Another application is your Facebook friend recommendation, right? You go on Facebook, right? You go on Facebook, right? As soon as you log in, uh, Facebook could show you some recommendations of friends. For example, it looks like this. You could, he could say, okay, probably this person is a friend of yours. Do you want to add a friend? 
right? So recommendations like this are powered a lot by advances in data structures and algorithms. Right? Of course, there is some machine learning also involved in this and artificial intelligence involved in this. But at the core of it, at the core of whole of the friend recommendation is more of data structures and algorithms. So good knowledge of data structures and algorithms is super important. And we see this every day. All these are day-to-day -day applications that we come across. This is nothing very fancy. These are stuff that we encounter every day. Suppose you book an Uber cab, for example, or an Ola cab, or a Lyft cab, right? All of these cab aggregator services also have to plan on how to send the right cab to the right person. So all of these transportation systems, all of these transportation systems use data structures and algorithms extensively day in, day out. Okay, again, companies uh, which are, suppose this very video that you're watching, right? This very video that you're watching, this video is being streamed to you almost like with, with, with almost no lag at all. Okay, this whole video that you're watching right now is being streamed to you across the internet. Right? How is all of this information, how is all of this video being streamed from probably a server that we are hosting to your desktop or laptop or your mobile phone? Okay, there is a, there is a lot of inner workings here. So the whole internet traffic being routed Right? Your internet traffic, right? This is literally a traffic of bits and bytes. Right? This is basically a traffic of bits and bytes. Just like your transportation traffic has cars, motorbikes, cycles, etc. Your internet is a traffic where there are bits involved. And data has to be sent from your server to, to your desktop or mobile phone, whatever. And how is all of that done so seamlessly, so beautifully, so elegantly? All of that is because of the power of data structures and algorithms being extensively used underneath the whole internet itself. Without, without data structures and algorithms, there is no internet. Let's be honest there. Okay. So these are tons and again, this is just a small sliver of examples. This is a small subset of examples. I would argue that almost every major computer science application, every major computer science application that you've seen, be it be your operating system like a Windows or a Mac, everything that you see uses data structures, algorithms, and programming. Very importantly, data structures and algorithms. Without data structures and algorithms, I can confidently say that there is not even a single piece of useful system that is built which does not use data structures and algorithms. Almost every application, every application, every mobile app that you have used, everything uses data structures and algorithms internally. It's just that we don't know about it. And the whole goal of this, of this set of videos right now is to help you understand data structures and algorithms. So I hope you have gotten some appreciation of why we should learn it. Of course, because it's useful for a job, it's useful to crack exams. And most importantly, when, when you become a software engineer in any of these areas, this is the most useful skill that you need. And it's used everywhere. So where is it used? Almost every major application. How is it used? We'll come to it. When we learn some data structures and algorithms, I'll also try and connect the dots. So whenever I explain a concept, for example, we learn about some sorting algorithm, let's say. If you don't know what sorting algorithm is, don't worry, we'll learn it. Okay, I'll explain you how these sorting algorithms are useful in different contexts. Where are they not useful? Where should we use an algorithm? Where, where we should not use a specific algorithm? I'll go into all of those details, right? But in a nutshell, data structures and algorithms, if you ask me, is the most important uh, subjects in the whole of undergraduate level computer science after programming. Of course, I'll give the first preference to programming, second to data structures and algorithms.